Hi, I'm Lari, and welcome to month two of your at-home strength and sculpt training program. What you need for this at-home training program is dumbbells, bands, long bands, and mini bands. And you will also need a workout bench. Now, if you don't have the workout bench, you can replace it with an ottoman, with a chair, with just some sort of elevation. If you need an additional substitute, please feel free to comment below and I would be happy to give it to you. Now, this is not my typical follow along workout. This is a workout for you to do on your own time, at your own pace, and to progress yourself. During this intro, I'm going to go over how to follow this program. Then after this intro, you will see every single exercise demoed. First thing that you need to do is go into the description of this video. Click on the Google Sheets app link. That will take you to the program. Once you open that program, that program is locked. You're not going to be able to edit it, write down your reps. So what you need to do it's just simply make a copy. After you make a copy, it's your own and you're going to be able to record your sets, write down your sets so you can progress weekly and write any additional notes that you need to make for yourself. Be sure to record your weight with the number of reps you achieved every single exercise for every single set. It's very easy to forget what you did the week before. So make sure that you record it so next week you can get even better. Because we are using a progressive overload technique in order to get better, to get stronger, and to achieve your goals. So every single week you can progress either with weights, with reps, with tempo, better form, and or just a better mind-muscle connection. There are many different ways to progress yourself. If the previous week you were on the high end of the rep range, I would suggest increasing the weight. If you were on the low end of the rep range, you can either stay with the same amount of weight and try to increase the reps or do a little bit of both. Make it your own and try to get better at every single exercise. We will be following this program for a minimum of four weeks. My goal is to have a new program out for you guys every single month. However, you can definitely follow this program for longer than a month. I typically have clients follow a program anywhere from four to 10 weeks. And that's going to depend on the individual and their goals. In this program, we have five training days, three on, one off, two on, one off. Of course, you could rearrange it however you see fit. The order of exercise is listed alphabetically and numerically. So for example, if we have two exercise listed as A1 and A2, we're going to complete A1 and A2 before moving on to B1. If you have any questions about that, please comment below and I would be more than happy to answer them for you. As far as rest periods, they are not monitored, so take as long as you need in order to perform your next best set, unless otherwise specified. The first week we are getting used to the exercise, so this is our acclimation week. This doesn't mean easy by any means. I still want you to challenge yourself, but really concentrate on making great form and great mind-muscle connection. Week two, we're gonna try to get a little better, try to bump up the weight. Week three, even better. And week four, best week yet. A little terminology, AMRAP means as many reps as possible with good technical form. So there are some sets where we're going to perform as many reps as possible, but once we cannot move the weight and or our form starts to slip, the set is over, we have failed, and failing, my friends, is a good thing. That's how we get stronger. Tempo, I do have some tempo listed. The first number is always the eccentric or lengthening phase of the muscle. So I'm gonna take a bicep curl, for example. The eccentric is the lengthening phase as we lower, the muscle gets lengthened. The second number is the number in between the eccentric and the concentric phase. And the concentric phase is the shortening or the contraction of the muscles. So eccentric, second number is the pause in between the eccentric and concentric. The third number is the contraction. And then the fourth number is the time between the concentric and eccentric. That's probably very confusing at first. I totally understand. It will get easier with time. Just always look for that first number and remember that's where we're going to lengthen the muscle. For this training program, all muscle groups are being worked. There is quite a focus though on building that hourglass shape. So building your delts, building your lats, building your glutes, and strengthening the entire body. Again, if you have any questions about how to follow this program and or need a substitution for these exercises, please comment below. On to the demos and happy training, my friends. 
we begin your warm up with banded monster walk. So the band is right above the knees and you're walking forward at an angle. Once you reach your final destination, walk it back. You can travel forward for eight and back for eight, four, back for four. Use what room you have available. A1 is barbell deadlifts. We begin with high repetition. So keep your spine as still as possible while sending the hips back. Go a little conservative on your first set. As the reps decrease, increase the weight selection. Feel a big stretch along the hamstrings as you go back, 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 and then you drive the hips forward to bring it up. Of course, if you do not have a barbell, use dumbbells in place of the barbell. You're using the same muscles, it is the same movement pattern. For B1, start with your weaker side first. So if it's your right side, you're gonna drive up with your right glute to bring you up to that full extension and then control it on the way down. You're going to perform B1 and B2 on the same exact side before switching to the other side. For these toe taps, if you have something to hold on to, hold on to it and then hinge the hips back as slow as possible. Think five, four, three, two, one, then drive it up with that standing leg. So you're not using that back leg at all this exercise. These dumbbell sumo squats are a very slow tempo and a very low rep count. So really challenge yourself with the weight selection. Take it down for a count of three, one count pause, and then you're taking it up for a count of three, two, one. Try not to lock out at the top. So you're keeping constant tension in the muscles throughout. You'll then take that same exact weight that you use for the sumo squats and use them for these hip thrusts and add a pulse at the top. Now, if you were to exceed 30 reps, please increase the weight so we're not here all day, but really make this hard with the tempo. Feel your glutes, squeeze them at the top, squeeze them again at the top. You will perform D1 and D2 on the same side again before switching to the other side. Brace yourself with the contralateral hand and again, think about sending the hips back and then hips forward. Your core stays tight throughout and the tension remains in that standing leg. You should feel this in your glutes and in your hamstrings. When going to D2, you'll use the same weight as D1 at a quarter rep at the bottom. Again, perform D1 and D2 on the same side before switching and matching on the other side. And now we're on to our glute burnout. Band around the quads, bring the soles of the feet together, and then you're pumping it out, squeezing the glutes. This is E1, no rest going into E2. You're going to hold it out, lower abs are engaged, and then you drive the legs out and out. So you're gonna feel this in your lower abs. If you bring the head off the ground, you'll feel it in upper as well. Then we end with banded reverse crunches. As we drive the knees in, engaging the lower abdominals, keep tension on the band to really fire up the glutes. After E3, take a full rest before returning to E1. We begin your warm up on day two with DeFranco pull aparts. Use a super band, anchor it underneath your feet, and then pull it apart at eye level. If a super band is not available, just use a regular band and perform face pulls in place. A1 is dumbbell shoulder presses in a seated position. Maintain a semi-pronated grip throughout and a slow controlled tempo on the way down. We start with a high rep count of 15 to 20. Every set, the reps will decrease. And as the reps decrease, your goal is to increase the weight. You're supersetting A1 with these banded ISO Superman pull downs, pronated grip, really squeeze the lats on the way down and try to maintain the Superman position throughout, but of course, release down if needed. For B1, we have dumbbell lateral raises in a standing position, so keep your core tight. At a quarter rep at the top, keep the dumbbell slightly in front of the body and pretend like you're pouring out a glass of water at the top to really target the side or medial delts. Going into B2, only give yourself 30 seconds of rest 
and then use the same exact weight for these dumbbell front raises. Rotate the palms from a neutral to pronated position at the top, and again, keep your rib cage stacked over your pelvis and your core tight. We end this triset with dumbbell hip hinge reverse flies, same exact weight, and this is an AMRAP set, so as many reps as possible with a supinated grip targeting your rear delts. Try not to bounce here. It's gonna be really hard, but keep the core tight and keep it a strict movement. C1 is barbell rows. You have a pronated grip and a really controlled tempo. Abs stay tight to help stabilize the spine. So keep the spine as still as possible here to really engage the upper and mid portion of your back. Now, if you do not have a barbell, substitute that same exact movement with dumbbells. We superset your rows with some standing bicep curls. Maintain a supinated grip throughout this entire movement, which makes it really, really challenging. Five second eccentric, one count squeeze at the top. Keep your core tight, keep the rib cage stacked over For the pelvis. For your tricep dips, we have our feet elevated to make it more challenging. If this isn't accessible to you, you can begin with your feet on the ground. To progress, bring them up like so. To progress even further, place a weight on the lap. D1 is a standing neutral grip shoulder press. Keep the abs super tight. Take it with a very slow, controlled tempo. We only have 10 to 12 reps here. This is really going to target the front of the delts. Once you're done with D1, minimal rest before going into D2, where we add the lower body to drive the dumbbells up. Take this to about one rep left in the take. So not we're not failing out, but we have maybe one rep left before we have to call it a we day. In day two with a try and buy superset, have your band anchored right above the head to really get that full extension of the elbow. If that's not accessible, add a little hinge to make it more of a tricep kickback variation. We will superset this with E2, banded bicep curls, supinated grip, rep it out, rest pause if needed. We warm up your glutes and your legs with some body weight step ups. Perform your weaker side first if you have one. Really drive through the heel and feel your glutes get you up there. A1 donkey kicks, one drill quarter rep can be performed with a dumbbell or an ankle weight if you have it available. For the quarter rep, I want you to squeeze your glute, squeeze it hard again, control it down core stays tight to keep those hips level. If you have a bench available, please do your hamstring curls on the bench because it will increase the range of motion and difficulty. You're taking it with a five second eccentric on the way down, one count pause, one count drive it in. If you don't have the bench, of course, you can perform it on the ground. It will just decrease the range of motion. Place a band around the quads and keep tension on the band throughout for these barbell hip thrusts. Two count pause at the top, excruciating two count pause, three counts as you lower. Reps decrease on each set and as the reps decrease, increase the weight. Load up the barbell, sub with dumbbells if needed. B1 with some dumbbell static lunges. Slight hinge forward to bias the glutes a little bit more. Perform these reverse hypers on a bench to increase the range of motion. And when you add the pulse at the top, pulse into the band and up. So think out and up during that quarter rep. This will really target your glutes, especially your glute medius. 
C2, we have dumbbell front loaded bench squats. Really focus on the hinge here from the hips to bias your glutes over your quads. So think about tapping, going back, 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 barely tap that bench, then drive it up. So no full rest on the bench, just barely tap it, little kiss, and then drive it up. For your dumbbell B stance RDLs, you'll have 80% in the standing leg and then about 20% of the weight in your kickstand leg. Let the hips go back, back, back. Drive the hips forward. If you have a weaker side, be sure to do your weaker side first. After the last set only, rest for 30 seconds and then you'll perform one by as many reps as possible with a bilateral stance, meaning equal weight in both feet. If you exceed 30 reps, stop there and next week aim to increase the weight. Set your RDLs with body weight bird dogs. This is a great exercise to target your transverse abdominal. You will also feel your glutes light up as well. We end your day three with a tricep burnout, Copenhagen plank holds. Press the top foot into the bench and squeeze the bench with the bottom foot as well. This will fire up your adductors, your obliques are on fire, your delts are getting a little work as well. This one is tough if needed. Release that bottom knee. We then go straight into banded side plank abductions. You're pressing that top leg out. This fires up the glute medius and your obliques. If needed, release the bottom knee. We then go straight into E3. No rest until after E3, which is ISO bridge banded abductions. Now, if you get to the end of this set and you feel like that was so, so easy, what I want you to do to progress at a weight on top of the lap, the top of the lap, and think about pulsing up and out into the band to really fire up and burn out those day glutes. four is a rest day so onward to day five which is our second full upper body day and we warm up with banded spider crawls keep tension on a band throughout and as you walk it up for six you're also going up at an angle once you get for six at the top go down for six at an angle so you'll feel it more in the delts on the way up lats on the way down we begin your workout with standing dumbbell arnold presses and you flip the grip as you drive the dumbbells up during the concentric portion. Slow on the eccentric, every set the reps will decrease and as the reps decrease, your goal is to increase the weight. Keep your core tight and do not let the hips rotate open. During the pause at the top, I want you to add a pulse. So I want you to think about squeezing your lats, squeezing your lats again, controlling it on the way down. We superset your row with some curls. Add a band for a little bit more spice. So you add a band around the wrist, maintain a neutral grip, keep tension on that band throughout, and we're getting delts and we're getting biceps. For your barbell chest press, have a bout a little wider than shoulder width grip, five second eccentric on the way down as you take it towards the chest and drive it up. If you don't have a barbell, replace the same exact exercise with dumbbells. We'll superset your chest press with some dumbbell lat pullovers. Control the tempo on the way down. Feel a big stretch of the lats before driving it up. These dumbbell seated four-way raises will target the medial and anterior portion of the delts. Four part movement. That was one, two, three, four. Control it. One, two, three, and four. Minimal rest before going into D2. You'll use the same exact weight that you were using for D1 for these dumbbell front raises. Rotate the palms from neutral to pronated at the top and perform until you have about one rep left in the tank. 
You'll have 15 to about 30 seconds to recover before moving on to D3, which is a seated dumbbell hip hinge reverse fly. Same exact weight that you were using for D1, but this time you're taking this set to failure. Full rest after this before going to D1. If you have a barbell available and a rack available, try out this exercise. It is absolutely fabulous. Elevate the feet to progress. You don't have to elevate the feet, but when you're ready to progress with feet on the ground, progress the feet up. You can also progress even more by adding a weight to the lap. Now setup can be kind of complicated here, so give yourself some grace and some patience, but try it out. Now, if this isn't available, don't worry. I want you to sub it with some dumbbells and you'll perform a dumbbell row. Semi-pronated grip, slow control tempo. We are ending day five with the superset burner, man. These super, these Spider-Man push-ups are challenging. They are hard. They are advanced. So again, if needed, I'll show you a modification after this, but control it, same knee, same forearm, and then back to your starting position. This will target your chest, delts, triceps, obliques, and if needed, just perform a push-up on or off the knees. The Spider-Man push-up is something to progress and work towards. Grab your mini band for this final exercise, banded swimmers, and you're going opposite leg, opposite arm, up and down. But when you go up and down with the band, I also want you to press out and up, out and down. And that is going to burn. Rest pause if needed. We begin your final day with some single leg terminal knee extensions. So as you press back into that band, this is great for your knee health, but you're also really going to fire up your quad. So you'll feel it in the front of your leg. Squeeze hard. Leave your band anchored right around knee level. I'm using one band and, and looping myself in there. You can also use two bands. The goal here is at the very top of the movement, you're gonna feel your quads work against the band just like you did the TKEs. Control it on the way down by adding that quarter rep and keep your spine in a neutral position. After you complete 10 to 12 reps, minimal rest, release that weight, and then you're repping out 10 to 15 body weight versions of that same exact exercise. And after A2, your quads, they should be feeling it. We'll give our quads a little break for B1, banded from behind, RDL. Set your band right around hip level. Anchor it to something sturdy. That's just gonna give us that little extra spice at the top. So this is the hard part, hardest part of the movement when the glutes are fully lengthened. But now, by adding that band, we also get that extra something, that glute engagement at the top of the movement as well. C1 is humbling, start with a band. You kneel back, you're gonna feel this in your quads. When you can go back no more, or if you find that you start to have to hinge from the hips, that's your in range motion, use the band to assist up. So take it back really, really, really slow. Your quads are gonna burn, use the quads to drive you back up. Core stays tight, spine stays tight, to progress, body weight only, and you can even add a weight to the chest as well. You will then go into dumbbell Bulgarian split squats. Keep the upper body more upright to make this more of a quad focused exercise. You have 10 to 12 reps. After those 10 to 12 reps, you will then release the weight and then the front heel will lift off of the ground. You'll feel it in your calf on the front leg and then you're going to start to pulse it down. Do this for as long as possible, have a clock available, and then you're going to match it on the other side. Take a seat, elevate your feet to get an extra stretch in the calf for these dumbbell seated calf raises. Super slow tempo. We have the elevation to increase the stretch on the way down, which will increase the contraction and the engagement on the way up. After 12 to 15 reps, go to body weight only, maintain the elevation and rep it out for as many reps as possible.
we end your final day with a banded triset ab burnout. Place the band right around the laces. We have banded spreader setups to start, so take it all the way up, twist at the top, control it down. You will feel this in your abs. This is also a great hip flexor strengthening exercise as well. No rest before going straight into E2. We drop it straight into these banded bicycles. So this one is going to burn. If needed, you have 15 reps each side on the bicycles. You can rest pause as needed. Again, try not to rest before we go into our final exercise, which is a banded flutter abduction kick. So not only are we going up and down with the feet like a traditional flutter kick, we're also going out at an angle. And this one will burn your lower abs and your glutes. Once you're done, oh, fling off that band. You're done, great job.